Hi there. Thespa UK Association was first set up in 1934 as the DP SPA. Since then it's undergone many changes, appearing in its current guise in January 2012. It sets out to represent the interests of digital wide format, screen, industrial and specialist printers and its remit is to advance best practice and hopefully help businesses grow their profit and bottom line. Mark Simpson has been president of the association since 2010 and I'm here now to ask him how it's living up to its remit. Mark, when FESPA UK rebranded as such from PRISM back at the beginning of 2012, um, basically to reinforce its links with FESPA, you thought that would bring new members, which in turn would bring new ideas into the association. Do you think that's happened? Well, Leslie, we've been cautiously pleased with progress since, uh, since January 2012. Memberships increased by 30%. So from 51 members to 66, admittedly not big numbers, but what I'd like to say is that uh, the current members of FESPA are some of the largest um, wide format service providers in the UK, representing something like 30% of the POS market. So we've got a fairly good share of that. Um, the association with FESPA, the FESPA brand is key. I think as you've mentioned, FESPA's a globally recognised brand. Um, it's, it's evolved over the years to become a very successful events and exhibitions yeah. business. But what people have got to remember is that FESPA was originally set up as a, 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 a European association of, um, of trade, trade associations. Um, and I think the message is, is that if you want to have access to FESPA's extensive global network, then you need to be members of FESPA UK Association. In general, trade associations everywhere are seeing declining numbers in membership. Do you think it's a cost issue or do you think associations just generally need to change their remit? Yeah, I think, I don't believe cost is an issue. If you look at the actual annual fee for membership to FESPA UK, you're starting up at £384 for the smaller uh, businesses, mm. uh, rising up to, I think it's £1,032 for the larger businesses. Well, when you join, mem uh, join FESPA, from, that, from the day you join, you already have access to a wealth of industry surveys, um, uh, environmental service, the Planet Friendly Guide, for example, publications of real value. So my argument would be that for, especially if one of the smaller companies, for £384, you're getting the value of your membership back immediately by able to download this, uh, this extensive information. Um, your point about um, review and remits is something that FESPA have been looking at uh, over the last uh, 12 months. So we've started to run surveys, both to our mem current membership and to non-members, on what exactly do they want from a trade association, right, right. what do they value, and I think what's, what's, what's come out of that is the fact that we need to um, be developing more industry-specific services. So by that I mean services that are not available through other business support organisations. Yeah, yeah. So this is sort of like um, technical helplines, technical information, industry surveys, networking events, factory visits, that, those sort of things which we see of great value. So at FESPA UK Association, what percentage of members are printers as opposed to um, suppliers and manufacturers? And is that an ideal ratio? The current split is 50-50. So admittedly, we, we do want to have more printer members. You know, um, but having said that, it's very, very important for us to, to maintain the, uh, the supplier members because I think it's important that FESPA UK has, uh, has an association with the whole of the industry supply chain because we're all interdependent on each other. So do you feel then that the current membership um, puts you in a position to claim to represent um, all of the sectors that you set out to represent, i.e. digital wide format, screen, specialist and industrial? Yes, that's true. And I think, yes, you're right. We can't really claim to represent all of those interests until we grow our membership. So we're on, you know, like a, a, a big membership push. I've got to say, though, that the, the current printer members cover not, you know, screen print is one part of it, but they cover Litho, yes. they cover wide format digital flatbed, real fed digital, industrial printing, textile printing, exhibitions, events, you know, all the yeah. whole gamut of sort of um, wide format uh, service. So how do you actually go about um, gathering the views of members in terms of what their true um, interests are? We've, we, we, we're running a survey um, on, you know, as I say, what members and, and non-members want out of an association. On top of that, we've got um, a, a very good technical and legal helpline where, you know, members can ring in and, and, and pose their issues and questions and get responses on that and put their views forward. Uh, I think the other key thing to say is that uh, we've got a very strong, rep truly representative board of directors. 
So the board of directors of FESPA are all actively involved in running businesses in this sector. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they've got extensive industry contacts, um, both on the supply side, customer side, and um, obviously other, um, other printing companies. So it's a great sounding board for new ideas and new um, and issues that are coming up. And I think the other thing in terms of representation is that uh, at the recent um, London exhibition, the London Vesper exhibition, uh, the, the newly formed Graphics and Media Alliance, the Gamma, was, was, um, which chose Vesper and Vesper UK Association as the platform for its launch. Now Gamma's uh, um, basically the, the idea of it, it's, a, it's an association of, uh, of around about 10 different um, print-related trade associations and the idea is that they're going to provide a cohesive voice to the government to influence policies that affect our industry. So again, if you're a member of FESPA UK, you, you, you have direct input into government policy through the Gamma uh, representation. One notable exception to the, the Gamma Alliance is the BPIF who decided to opt out as the BPIF already uh, lobby government directly themselves, but uh, they don't represent our sector. So again, I think it's important if you want to have a direct voice in, a, in, in government policy making, then you know, the Gamma um, vehicle is going to be a good one for the FESPA UK Association. Can you tell us a bit more about what are your best used services then? Um, <clears throat> the online help uh, regarding technical help, technical support, legal help is, is very well used, utilised. Um, and in, in, interestingly, in the last month alone, we've had something like 350 visitors asking for um, details on membership. So it can act as a good marketing tool as well. And are there any services that you think um, need disbanding or adding? I think we, we've again we've gone through a lot of debate over the last uh, the last year or two on on what services we should be developing and what services we maybe should be sort of dropping away. And I think the the, the key finding from that is that it needs to be industry specific. You took over as president in twenty ten. Can you tell us what your main focus has been since then? My key focus has been to get real industry issues firmly on the table. And from my point of view, I see two key areas at the moment that are that the industry needs to address, our sector in particular. First of all, the, um, the pressure on price and margin down over through yeah. overcapacity generally. So that's one key area that we're looking at. And second of all, the uh, skills gap, the increase in skills gap. As you know, we're, uh, we're an ageing industry and we've got to do a lot more to attract bright young people into the industry. So to that effect, we've recently launched an apprenticeship scheme backed by the government so we can get funding for that. Um, it, it's, it's provided by a provider who are qualified printers and qualified trainers and it can be regionalised. And we've already had a, a, a number of members subscribing to that and taking apprentices on. I think it's been a big miss in the industry over the last 10 years or so that apprentices have dropped out because they're the lifeblood. And, you know, despite the fact that print may be seen as a, as a dinosaur industry, it's actually, a, our sector in particular, because it's a very creative sector of the industry, is a very exciting career prospect for a lot of young people. And it's amazing. We, we've taken on apprentices over the last few years and they're, they're really enjoying the job and, and, and they say career from it. And interestingly enough, we I mean, as a, as a business ourselves, we've just recruited in a marketing manager from an online retail company, an e-commerce retailer, who sees our industry has better prospects for them. So I think that's, that's quite an interesting development. We've, we've recently brought in apprentices on, on the, the customer services side and estimating for the oh, first okay. time. You know, it, it, traditionally you'd bring apprentices and put them on the shop floor on the back of machines and they'd start to, to work on the production mm -hmm. side. But for the first time, we're starting to bring apprentices into the, the, the administration side, the customer service side, and we're getting great results. You know, you, you, you can develop them and mould them and, uh, the way you want uh, yeah. uh, to, to suit the needs of the business and the customers. So that, that is definitely changing. So going forward, what would you say are the association's um, key targets and key issues now? Well, key focus has got to be de to develop the membership, and especially the printer membership. Um, now, the, the recent um, uh, exhibition at FESPA uh, in London at the Excel Centre has been the first real chance we've had to um, promote yeah. the, uh, the association to a wider audience. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think, you know, we're expecting great results from that. Uh, so, you know, that's... that's First of all, we've got to make sure we get a good, strong membership. And then it's, it's, it's getting the issues that I mentioned, you know, the uh, declining prices and margins, the skills gap, firmly on the table and, and coming up with methods and, and ways to, uh, to um, plug the skills gap. And second of all, promote um, the inherent value of printed media against, you know, other competing medias. Um, and, you know, and use our member success stories to, to do that.
I think printers have notoriously been a very secretive bunch. Yeah. So they don't promote themselves particularly well. They try and keep their sort of trade secrets to themselves. But I think recently there's become a sort of dawning realisation that other printers are not necessarily the main competition. The main competition is other uh, competing medias like yeah. social media, um, mobile apps, yeah. um, it's, you know, the, the Facebooks and whatnot. So we've got to show what we can do differently to uh, online media. And as you've said, the, uh, the wide format market is a very, very creative sector with a lot of different applications. And, it, and it's not just about communication, as you've said again. It's about an emotive uh, response to a, to a, to a, to a sign or dec a decoration. It's, uh, you know, it provides impulse reactions and, and all this sort of thing. So it can do a lot of things that, that online media cannot. And I think it's got to really focus on its strengths. But to do that, we've got to get the industry more united to promote those, uh, those special things that we can do.